In order to understand the construction of the airplane, it is necessary to consider its principal structural elements, the materials from which it is fabricated, and the loads to which it will be subjected. With regard to the structure of an airplane, it may be divided into four main structural units, each with distinct functions. The fuselage is the central unit to which the other units are attached. The wings provide most of the lift for the structure. The control surfaces are used to guide the airplane in flight. These consist of the empennage or tail assembly and the ailerons or wing control surfaces which are attached to the trailing edge of each wing. The alighting gear permits movement of the airplane on the ground. In the single engine airplane, the fuselage or body of the airplane carries the engine cowling, the pilot's cockpit or canopy, and the tail group. The fixed surfaces in this group horizontal stabilizer and vertical fin stabilize the flight of the airplane. The movable surfaces, rudder and elevator, control it. The ailerons are hinged to the trailing edge of the wings and are used to raise one wing while depressing the other for banking the airplane. Wing flaps are also hinged to the trailing edge of the wing and are used to decrease the landing speed of the airplane. The main units comprising the alighting gear are the oleo strut or shock absorber and the retracting mechanism. In airplane construction, some materials are employed more generally than others. Steel alloy is used where maximum strength is required to withstand strain and vibration such as those exerted by engines. Sheet aluminum alloy is used in the skin covering and is the material used in the manufacture of light parts. Aluminum alloy extrusions of various shapes are used in the formation of spars, ribs, braces, and in the fabrication of the sub-assembly. Streamlined tubing, internally braced, is used where exterior bracing is required. The extruded shapes are cut to size and bent to shape before the parts are fabricated. Movable tail surfaces and ailerons are usually fabric covered. Fiber is used for pulleys, gaskets, and washers. Fabric reinforced rubber hose is used in the hydraulic system and sponge rubber for vibration dampers and insulation. Copper is used in the multitude of electrical contacts and connections. Bronze is used in bushings, bearings, and hydraulic fittings. The canopy over the pilot's cockpit is constructed of a synthetic material. Most of the materials used in airplane construction are provided with a protective coating. Sheet aluminum alloy is thoroughly cleaned in a hot cleansing solution and then spray painted with an oxide primer. Tubing is carefully cleaned and the end sealed to prevent foreign substances from lodging in the tubing during assembly. Steel fittings, where possible, are cadmium plated to prevent rust and corrosion. Aluminum alloy parts are given an anodic treatment which deposits the compound of the metal on the surface by electrolysis. Impregnated with nitrate dope and painted, fabric covered surfaces are stored until assembly. The entire structure of the airplane must be able to withstand safely the loads that will be placed on it in service. 
These loads may be exerted on the structure in combat maneuvers. The wings must be able to stand both positive and negative loads. The positive load being one which acts upward in relation to the airplane. Maximum positive load may be reached in pulling out of a dive. Maximum negative load may be imposed in an abrupt pushover or a sudden thrust forward on the stick. Inverted flight also applies a high negative load. Turbulent air may also impose high wing loads, negative in the downdraft and positive in the updraft. Drag, due to the speed of the airplane, is exerted on all exterior surfaces. When landing, ground loads must be absorbed by the structure of the airplane. A few elementary factors affecting airplane structures have been presented here. Other films will deal with the construction of the component parts of the airplane.